Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to Wildermyth, Monarchs Under the Mountain. As today, we jump into Chapter 4, and we're opening things up with a new face, our latest recruit. Say hello to Mark Diemza, a name that might be vaguely familiar for those of you who watched my old Gears Tactics series. I don't know if he actually looks like this, but I mean, when I think of him now, I think Guy Fieri. That's it, let's uh, have a look. Mark Giemza, the greedy goofball. Mark's parents delighted in embarrassing their son. Still, their love could never be questioned. They taught him to sing, to dance, to laugh at his own misfortune, and find strength in family. An odd smell spur turned his smile to sludge in the eyes of all but the woman he'd marry. The more others questioned his motives, the less clear they often got. So, as you can see, Mark is a bit of an enigma, with creative, weird, and mysterious. So it's a bit uh, hard to predict exactly where he's going to go. I'm very curious to see what he ends up turning into. Because, I mean, you know, he's he is going to shed that mortal shell at some point. Aside from that, not much else to say. Um, I did do a tiny bit of setup off-screen, just so we could get to this point. But that said, let us proceed. Burning Questions The Retcon Raiders? Fantastic! I have so many questions to ask you! Of course. The company always has time for... So, is Nolan as amazing in person as he sounds in the stories? Uh... How did it feel when Nolan disappeared into thin air and reappeared on the other side of that ravine? That wasn't... Is it true he can take down a deepest in one shot? Listen, every victory is a collective victory. Do you think that if I joined you, I'd get a chance to fight alongside him? Oh, for the love of... Ha 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 ha! Wait, come back! Come back, I'm sorry. Indy put me up to it. I'll tell him your face was more than worth it. But, uh, in all seriousness, though, Indy said you're looking for another recruit? <laughs> Way to make a great first impression. Welcome aboard, Mark. Mark the Mystic. That'll, uh, that'll help the B-Team scavenge locations a bit more efficiently. Though, uh, that said, I am still seriously considering trying to get both squads active. I mean, obviously we need to train Mark up, but, um... I do think there's some strong possibilities there. Uh, especially if we can luck into another recruit, because then we can shore up the weaker squad with a fifth member. Ooh, humanist. We already have a naturalist and an elementalist, so I think humanist is the way to go. Which, I mean, let's be honest, probably... Probably fits someone like Mark anyway. You can't put a spell like Shardnado in front of him and expect him not to take it. Alright, let's get some infrastructure going. And we'll send a full five-man team in to start scouting new territories. Nimble Pine Woods. Red Rush Dream Loom. That is quite a name. Come on, Rowan. Try to keep up. Hero Warship. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Ah, Red Brush Dreamloom. Ruins of dust and dirt and now Morthagi. As is his way, Nolan walks a bit back from the group. 
which is why he is the first to notice. We're being followed. Quietly, he falls even farther back and circles around. This is a good spot to ambush whoever's on our tail. A human? Stop right there! Ah! You okay back there, Nolan? I'm fine, but this little stalker here better start talking. Well? Oh, oh, you're... you're him! Best day ever! Meeting the one, the only Nolan of the Retcon Raiders! Did Indy put him up to this too? And you're Rowan! The stories don't do you justice! You... know us? <laughs> yes, of course I know you! I'm Winlick, and I'm your biggest fan! You have got to be. Wait, biggest? You mean there are more of you? Never mind that. How do we know you're not a spy? A spy? Oh no, I'm afraid you have it all wrong. I'm not here to spy on you. I'm here to join you. Which is incredible. He's even a warrior. That's exactly what we needed. It's my life's ambition to be a member of the Retcon Raiders. I heard stories of you sung in taverns, of your deeds and your accomplishments. I knew I had to join you. I practiced with my weapons every day. I even defended my village a few times. I heard tell that you were nearby the other day. I set out immediately to find you. And so I have. Please, let me join you. I have been training tirelessly for this. I will be an asset to you. I promise. Sure, why not? You'll make a fine addition to the Retcon Raiders, Winlick. Though, uh, we'll... We'll have to do something about that name. Also, because he, uh, approached the party with Bunny in it, we get him at a discount. We're happy to have you along, Winlick. The more the merrier. R really? Woohoo! Alright, first lesson. No whooping right before a fight. Right, right, of course. But wait, fight? We're fighting? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You know, I think that's the exact same um, event we had that recruited Uncle Fred, our other goofiest member. Which uh, just seems to be a trend, I guess. Winlick certainly seems to be following in his footsteps. Shield chair is not awful, but that axe makes it pretty redundant. You know what? We'll go for Sentinel. That's just a lot easier to build around. And we're up against more Thoggy. That's slightly unexpected. And we have a Leaf Spirit, which I suppose could go to either Rowan or Winlick, whoever gets to it first. That's a pretty solid get for any frontline warrior. Uh, of course, we have to brush these spectics out of the way first. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. No stuns. We'll have to kill them the old-fashioned way. One. Hmm. Well, I thought Gaia would hit them harder. Though I suppose that thing does have four armor. There we go. Rowan gets his first kill. Well done, my friend. One link pushes up past him, competing. Oh. And yep, that's why you don't want to rush all the way up front. Careful there, Winlick. That Leaf Spirit won't do you any good if you die trying to get it. Our 
Our Mystics are starting to slow down. Can't say I blame them. I think they are both pushing 70. We'll have to adjust our tactics to take that into consideration. Coachman. Actually, not that big a deal, despite how scary it looks. Oof. Yeah, the Coachman's essentially the Morthogi equivalent of the Muskox. The Batchby's not really a big deal either. Pretty standard mid-tier melee unit. Let's take him out. Oh, Winleg. Come on, buddy. You're not going to cut it at this rate. Hmm. Still not enough. Actually, this is fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll just take out the uh, sommeliers. And the coachman can't get to us because we didn't leave a wide enough path for him. Batchby's out. Second time's the charm. Nicely done, Winlek. Leave spirits too far, but we can grab it next round. No luck with the stomp. Not much luck with the lightning either. Let's go ahead and trim armor. Let's drop the coachman. We'll get Rowan on the leaf spirit. And Bunny can finish off the coachman. Will do. Thank you, Bunny. Rowan evades the looming threat. But new threats have emerged. Come on, buddy. Time for us to leave. Huzzah! Instant upgrade. That bumps him up to a Tier 2 Leaf Mace. Temporary hit points on crit. We'll lock this guy down. So 
Sommeliers out. Oh, Urkel bits. Not bad. Though that was slightly better. Well done, Gaia. Um, when they can't get in there. And once again, Bunny coming in for the closer. Sorry to string you along like that. Though that does leave an active watchman. That's not ideal. Can we trim armor? No, too far. Ooh. Door is down, but still no eyes on the threat to our right. I'm hesitant to send Windlake in by himself, so let's clear the Watchman first. Nice. Watchman out. Which I suppose means we can push Windlake up. Because he now has two mages at his back. Ah, I see. Alright, well, let's see if we can clear that weldling. The wardrobe's not much of a threat on its own. We just need to uh, clear its spawns as quickly as it can spit them out. I guess we'll just bring the rest of the party up. We're obviously not getting in there this round. I was hoping object placement would be slightly more advantageous for our mages, but once again, nothing really close enough. At least for this awkward angle. Good luck, Winlick. I believe in you. didn't die. That's good. That's good. That is an admirable trait for a hero. Not dying. Man, that would have been a great time to land a hit, buddy. But it's cool. We're in much better positions now. Let's go ahead and lay down some cover fire. Rowan moving in. We'll get Rowan on Winlick's flank. Mm. Yeah, they're going to have to hold out for one more round. But we'll definitely clear these guys next turn. Oh no, not my warding, my precious warding. Hey, nice. Thank you, Nolan. I didn't think you'd actually land that. And we are pretty much done. Let's dogpile the wardrobe.
Nice. Winlick may not hit often, but when he does, he leaves an impression. And that's it for the wardrobe. Victory. With a level up for Bunny. Lovely. Well, we're definitely going with support. So it's either Spirit Blade or Upgrading Bard. And I think it's safe to say we're dropping Bard in her next life. So Spirit Blade it is. We also pulled a Belt of Chivalry, plus armor. Ceramic plates, each bearing little graven story scenes, are strung on a length of fine cord. That'll go to one of the new fighters, I think. We need them to get a lot tougher real quick. Bones and crows and knightly things. Cam can go here. At least it only smells vaguely like death. Fire doesn't need to be big, does it? I plan on a nice high fire. Why? Night smears the hills in blue above the site of the battle. How many times has it been like this? How many times will it be so again? Hey, Gaia. Gray grass is sleepy and still. Shadows make lakes between landforms. Did you know every star belongs to an owl? And every owl, a star. Owls vomit bone wads. So, remember who you're talking to. And about. Charming. All nightly things have a place. Some seek light or shed it, and others wear the dew and dark. You can cool your head sometimes, just with a few long drinks of starlight. Day will come, and dreadful work be needed. Ever as it was, the day gone by. Plus one legacy point. Which means that ultimately it only cost us a single point to recruit Winleg. Yeah, that's fine. In theory, we might um, face more Morthagi, but they are not the main antagonists of this campaign. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to bust out the list again and get Winleg set up, whose name I believe I misheard. I mean, I keep saying Winleg and he's too polite to correct me, but... I'm pretty sure it was something else. I've got it here somewhere. Hold on. We'll be right back. Yes, of course. Right. I, I don't know how I misheard it so badly, but his name is actually Altair Faltor. Altair Faltor, the romantic goofball. Altair's parents delighted in embarrassing their son. Still, their love could never be questioned. They taught him to sing, to dance, to laugh at his own misfortunes, and find strength in family. He glowed when someone mentioned adventure. Compelled by a ghost inside his bones, he sought starlit solitude, staring into the cosmos. So, somewhat similar to Mark, apparently he got tangled up in the same number string, but also with a few key differences there. Oh, shoot, I completely lost track of that incursion. Et voila! 
two reasonably functional teams, in theory. Though, uh, we'll want to put them through their paces, because we are running with a lot... Oh, shoot. Well, this is less than ideal. Um, okay, let's see where it's going. Oh, well, um, you know what? Somehow I think we'll manage. Nothing to really worry about here, and we'll allow it. And the general plan here is that once that incursion lays siege to that next tile over, we are going to have everyone jump on it. That'll be a great way to grab some quick XP for the newbies. We'll go ahead and scrap that. Ooh, and Feather Steel Bracelet, plus speed. Well, that we can certainly make use of. Hmm. Let's go ahead and toss that to Rowan. Let's get defenses up on Red Brush. We just don't want them to stray until the incursion's dealt with. Leaping Gashes Timberland. Burning Sage Mine. We'll go ahead and clear this tile. See how this lineup fares. Splinter. We've seen this one, I think. Oh. The Nick. Hey, I got a splinter. You say you got a splinter? If a splinter is what I think it is, then yes, I got a splinter. You got a splinter? We're stopping for this? I got a... what looks like a... Whew, I got a mean splinter. See? Sliding past an elm. I've gotten a bunch of splinters out in my day. I'll have a look. The mine was just a bit further, so should this really be our priority? Wow, that's some splinter. The more I look at it, the deeper in it seems to wriggle. Mm. Squirk. And that would be a guaranteed transformation if we kept it. But it's also a get out of death free card if we if we do successfully remove it yeah yeah let's go ahead and see if we can remove it if we can't we'll still get the transformation this won't hurt a bit it won't ow whoops but here it comes Painless and easy. Ah! Enough! Ha! <laughs> Got it! Altair holds a long, wet wood filament up to the light. What an incredible... Sorry, it's, it's just an absolute specimen. Can I... Altair slips it into a corded pouch, places it in Mark's hands. It's got your blood. Good luck to keep it. And with that, they carry on to Burning Sage Mine. Which does not have more Thoggy. We're up against Thrixel. Oh my goodness. Okay, we... We might be in trouble here. Because we are definitely not... Weird. Oh, Fire Spirit. Oh, and of course, the Drathix is right there, just outside of our Alpha Strike range. Yeah, we might be... We might be screwed here. 
That thing's got an incredibly powerful, venomous AoE attack. But, um, we'll see what we can do. Okay, that buys us some time. We can ignore the closer guys and focus on the ones in back. Kind of stand isn't a big deal. It is an annoyance, but we have much bigger threats to deal with first. Okay, decent hit on the Bard. Would have been nice to hit the Drathix too, but we'll take it. Closer Thrusk is out. Nicely done, Altair. No clear shot for Indy. I guess we'll just whittle a closer target. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. And Valen will do the same. Oh, right, he has uh, through shot. It's starting to get a bit tough to keep track of what everyone's got. And there it is. The Drathix tagged Bunny and Indy. So we've got poison on those two. Which essentially means Indy is now on a four turn timer before he bleeds out. So we need to move quick. Let's go for another crowd control. Oh, cool. Another nightmare to deal with. Well, that buys us more time. Let's trim the closer targets this time. Splinter Blast or Barrage? We'll go Barrage. course, just far enough away that we can't hit all three. Nice. Okay, that takes care of the worm. Now we can walk with rhythm again. The Seeker's a problem, but the Thrusk is a bigger one. You know, that Drathix had the right idea. Let's start laying down DOTs. Through shot should drop the thrust. Very nice. so on edge right now. There, there are so many ways this can end terribly. Oh, okay, okay, we're still in it. We have to hammer the Drathix. We could go for another Flare, but we might need to focus on damage if we actually want to drop it. No, no, Flare. It's got to be Flare. Oh, no! Okay, well, um, that may have just sealed her death warrant, but here we go. All in on dropping the Drathix. So we could go for yet another Flare. I think that one's actually too far away, though. No, no, we have to, we have to fight. Nice. 
Fallon, you're the uh, second most senior adventurer present. No uh, pressure? Oh, right. Dagger can't reach diagonally. That is unfortunate. But hey, a kill's a kill. Bard's out. Altair, you're up next. Come on, buddy. Yes, I knew we were dragging you around for a reason. Oh, uh, Indy's in stasis. That actually... That actually works to our advantage, because that stops the poison. Let's see what kind of damage we can do to the rest of these guys before we cut Indy loose. That is not particularly impressive, but we'll, we'll roll with it. Since we have Bunny for a follow through. Actually, let's go ahead and grab that fire spirit. Last turn, we can actually do that. Which nets us the Bleak Tide, a Tier 2 Fire Great Axe. Slight hit to crit damage, but now on crit, it will instead cause a burst of fire that hits all nearby foes. It's a Fire Axe. Now let's give them both barrels. That buys Altair some breathing room. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll cut the indie loose. That's risky, but we gotta do it. Now Indy goes in for the kill. Okay. I have no idea why that thing didn't attack us, but I will absolutely take it. Let's wrap this up. Oh, we have another thrust back there. I didn't even notice that. Makes no difference at this point, I suppose. Oh, come on. All right, um, now, now we might be in trouble. Mark, buddy, I am going to need you to do some real damage here. Yeah, yeah, that'll have to do. That nightmare is a problem, but so is the Kinestand. And the Thrusk. Kinestand. Kinestand has to go. The fight will never end if it keeps spitting out more mobs. Close, close, okay. Kinestand out. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. Everything's fine. We're good. It's not like both of our mystics are on death's door below half health. 
We'll just take it in stride. <laughs> Everything's good. Um... I don't suppose we could maybe get the nightmare away from Bunny. Oh, well, okay. Yes, I I I can work with that. I'll tear, buddy. You are killing me. Malin, go for a through shot, please. For goodness sake. All right, Mark. Take out the thrust. Okay, good. That leaves... One, two chrysalids, and a nightmare. Indy? Thank goodness for that. Okay. Thus it ends. We are bent but not broken. My goodness, that was stressful. But uh, hey, we made it through. That is a big check in the is this squad viable column. Though sadly no level ups, but we'll take what we can get. Plus potency, which would honestly be useful for half of our characters. Bunny's already pretty potent. We should probably toss that to one of the newbies. Yeah, yeah, let's um, let's shore up Mark's casting. If nothing else, this fight definitely showed we need more firepower. And Muse is on the field. That's lovely. Oh, man. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, this is walking lunch. It's how it works. Starts off relatively easy, but really starts to pick up steam once you get towards the end game. This is where things could all go wrong. A lot of it's going to come down to how our party fares between chapter 4 and 5, how they deal with that chapter transition. Strap of Faith plus Health. You know what, let's toss that to Nolan. On the one hand, he is retiring at the end of Chapter 4, but on the other hand, it would also be nice if he actually survives to see retirement. And you know what? <laughs> we're, uh, we're coming up on time anyway. I am all frazzled after that last fight. And the next thing we have to do anyway is... Rally to the defense of Barrowdale, which is going to be another 15 or so minutes of combat. So I feel like this is a good place to call it. You know, despite the uh, close calls, we actually did pretty good today, especially with that unexpected recruit. That said, we'll uh, hit the pause button for now. I'll try to get all our ducks in a row, rally on Barrowsdale, prepare for combat. And we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Aloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleave, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Jensen, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hoppenskip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. 
Or you can even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.